So I've been printing on the Bamboo Lab X1 since my Kickstarter shipped, and it's been great for everything from like decorative aesthetic prints to actual functional prototypes. But like the stock config just works so well out of the box, I haven't really seen a need to make any modifications. All I've really done is add the AMS, which I didn't have in my initial order, so I could have four filaments available for either multicolor or just quick switching between the different colors and materials between prints. But there are some materials that you just can't put in the AMS, like TPU is too soft and the carbon fiber blends are too brittle. So I really like using the normal spool holder for this kind of stuff, just to avoid any jamming in the AMS since it is kind of a pain to get apart and clear out. And there's even an option in software to have a fifth like spool of filament loaded on the spool holder outside of the AMS, but I do have two problems with this. First, I keep my printer like up against the wall pretty much to minimize the footprint. And every time I wanna use that rear spool holder, I have to pull it forward and then move it back, which is just kind of a hassle. And second, I can't really use that when the AMS hub is attached anyways. So I wanted to try and find an alternative solution that was front loading just like the AMS. And I ended up finding this model on printables that actually reuses the original spool holder and brings it up right next to the AMS. This took just over an hour to print out with the 0.2 millimeter strength profile in black carbon fiber reinforced PLA. And the assembly was pretty straightforward. You just need some M3 hardware and the original spool holder and the assembly is pretty quick. And for installation, you just clip it into the AMS. And I think the best part is when you're not using it, you can either fold it up so it's out of the way or you can just take it off entirely since it's not really attached with any screws. Also the files for this along with everything else that I talk about will be linked right below the like button in case you wanna add it to your setup. But to actually use this extra roll of filament, you have to take off the PTFE tube that's coming from the AMS, which is kind of a hassle if you want quick switches between prints. So I ended up printing out this little splitter that just mounts to the back of the X1. And you can either use filament from the AMS or this extra spool without having to take anything apart. It's a couple of small pieces that print in just over an hour and you just install them to the back of the printer using two M3 screws. But this splitter actually unhooks from its like base when you need it to. Outside of the screws though, this does require a couple of additional things. So you need a PC4 M10 fitting for the PTFE tube from the AMS, and you need another piece of PTFE tubing so you can route the filament from the side spool uh, without having any issues. But another limitation I found with the AMS is that some spools just don't fit. Like the cardboard ones from Protopasta are too tall, so the lid hits them when you close it, which causes the rollers to not rotate right and then causing print failures. I did a bit of research on this and I found an article from Protopasta that talked about a few different solutions that included cutting the spool, changing the spool and even just leaving the AMS open. But I didn't wanna to have to modify every roll of filament that I got. So I ended up going with this AMS spacer that pretty much just props the lid open a bit, but it's still closed and airtight enough if I'm using the desiccant to keep the filament dry. This printed in two separate pieces to fit on the build plate and it took just about an hour in PETG, but the install was super quick. You just put them into place on the AMS. I feel like a lot of these prints being just about an hour says a lot about how this printer doesn't need a lot of big upgrades and how the things that I am adding to it are relatively small. Also, a lot of things that I'm adding to it are to fix issues that I have with the AMS and not really the printer as a whole, if that makes sense. I think the longest upgrade on this list is the purge bucket, which took just about four hours using the 0.24 draft profile. And this is just a nice, simple piece that sits right behind the printer to catch all the little purge scraps and make cleanup a lot easier. It's probably the like most used thing I've added to this printer. And it's, I think, something that probably should have been there from the start as opposed to just dumping the purge onto the ground, which is kind of annoying to clean up. Also, I think my dog likes the purge bucket too, since I've had to reprint it about three times given that she keeps like biting it and pulling the scraps out but also she keeps chewing on the door handle. So I found this replacement on printables that's supposed to be more ergonomic. I think I prefer how slim the original door handle was, but this will work until I get a chance to design one for myself. And it was a relatively quick print at like about 45 minutes with a 0.12 fine profile. And it mounts using the same screws as the original, so you didn't have to get any extra hardware. Now the last upgrade I wanna to do to this printer is going from a 0.4 millimeter nozzle to a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. And this isn't really to increase speed, like the X1 prints fast enough and I can't even get a print to finish on ludicrous mode. So this is more for vase mode prints. I find that the 0.4 millimeter stuff is just a little bit flimsy. So I wanna add a little bit more strength to these parts with a 0.6 millimeter layer. I ended up going with the whole hot end assembly rather than just the nozzle. So I can switch back and forth relatively quickly. It was a super quick install, like less than five minutes since I just had to take off two screws and three plugs before just dropping in the new setup. And I've been using my iFixit kit for all these upgrades since I just find it a lot more comfortable and easy to use compared to the Allen keys that come with the printer. You can easily swap the bits to match whatever size 
size screw you're working on. And also they're magnetic, so you don't have to worry about the screws falling on the floor or off your workbench and getting lost. And there's a link down below if you wanna grab one for yourself. I think it definitely makes working on my printer and any other project a lot easier. Overall, I've really enjoyed the X1. It's like one of my favorite printers I think that I've used, but all of these little changes just make it that much better and a little bit more personalized to how I wanna use it. But thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos about tech, cameras, and making. Here's my full video about the Bamboo Lab X1, and here's a video that YouTube thinks you're gonna like the best.